LaserBear.net is now selling a 3D printed kit that lets you mount a tablet sized screen in a case that resembles a CRT. It's built for LCDs that are 4x3 aspect ratio and has a built in kickstand so you could rotate it in either direction for vertically oriented games. It's also got built in speakers and multiple HDMI inputs. Greg and I recently did two live streams assembling and discussing the kit, and the rest of this video is those streams edited down to what you'd need to know to assemble your own. Also, there's some more data and thoughts on RetroRGB.com, so please check out the main post if you have any other questions about this project. Okay, let's get to the streams. What's up, everybody? Thanks for joining. I'm here with Greg from Laser Bear. What's up, dude? Hey, guys. So um, Greg has made these very awesome 3D printed enclosures that make it look and sound are like it's a CRT. Uh, and I wanted to assemble one uh, because I think these are awesome. But I also have never assembled one of these before. And I usually make hilariously bad mistakes the first time I do something, so I figured it would be fun to do this live on stream so we could all laugh with me. And and at me. At me's fine too. Um so yeah, the uh the um cost to build one of these if you buy all the parts out, you'd probably be around hundred and eighty to two hundred dollars. Um if you get a cheap uh iPad, you can save some money there. Um you get like an iPad two or three from Craigslist and you're successful at removing the screen from it. Um, you might be able to get one for like five to 10 bucks on like a buy, sell trade or something like that, since they're basically worthless. And then your expensive part's going to be your driver board. It's going to cost about $50. I think the shovel's a bit overkill. <laughs> It'll be a, a nice, thank you, man. A Mythos quest, uh, throw back there. Screwdriver should be okay, but I, I think the, I mean, if you crack the uh, front glass, it doesn't really matter because that's not what you're using. Um, are there... I can't remember on the iPad 3 if there's screws or anything to start with. The, uh, Sometimes they had, like, uh, around the charge port or something. Good question. And it does not appear to have anything. So should I go around the perimeter like this? Um, probably... Because that's how they attached it to the frame, is just with glue. Okay. All right, so I'll edit the stream up a little bit, and then we'll do... Uh, <laughs> this will be do part it. one, removing the screen attempt. If it works, if it doesn't work, I'll just delete this, and we'll pretend like it never happened. <laughs> uh so Bob's trying to remove the screen from an old uh, iPad that he wants to repurpose the screen for a Mr. Display. Oop, oh, oh shit, it's working. Nice. All right, so you know what? This actually worked out because I would have never even tried this if we had the parts for the other one. And this yeah. is pretty neat. This is, this, I don't want to waste a good screen, especially because there's nothing else you could do with this iPad. And the uh, Samsung screens, I think, are more coveted, but the LG screens are just about the same. Did you cut yourself? No. That's Bob? why I was like, did I cut myself with the sharp part, or did I cut myself with this part? Or did I hit with, where am I, oh. with this part down here? So I didn't hit with the razor. I hit with that part. And that's why I was like, am I bleeding? No, nope, I'm good. Because I was like, you know, I, I thought I was holding that in the correct position. I didn't, like, I wasn't holding it up here. Like, like those, um, you ever see those stock footage of people soldering and they're holding the soldering iron like this, like on the, on the hot part. <laughs> There's so many of those. That's what I felt like just now. All right. Okay. Uh, broke half, half of the, uh. Razor blade, though. Well, you, you got most of the way in there, it looks like. And it looks like the model you had has the screen separate. So that makes it a, a lot easier. Because I think the next version up or whatever had the screen bonded to the uh, digitizer. Uh, 
we're uh, going to put our first four on zero together, and then we'll probably do a, a 2.4 to add to our production line. The zero is going to be a uh, prototype printer for me um, to use at home. Uh, and then my I've got a Prussia MK3 uh, bear at home that I'm currently using that will get moved to uh, the office for production again. So that's all I needed, right? Good. I needed to yep. um, salvage that. And that's yep. pretty much it. Now the screen is uh, good. Yep. All right. So where do we start for the front cover? Uh, so flip it on its face. Okay. And then there's a baggie with some uh, screws and parts in it. Yep. Uh, there's two 3D printed bits that look like squares. All right. So... To put your screen in, um, the top of the screen is the part with the um, flex cable coming out of the back of it. You want the f screen to face out. Okay. Now you're going to set the bottom edge of the LCD into the groove at the bottom. Um, let me get make sure. I'm... Now set the top edge down into the top. Well, uh, just lay, like. Yep. Okay. It should just pop like right in. The, it, I. I did feel like a um, yeah I, I felt a pop so it did go in it didn't it's kay. it's pretty solid it in should here. be it should be completely flush at the front side so it looks good yep. all right now those two plastic bits they go into sliders on either side at the top you see the like groove spaces yes 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 okay so the top edge of those sliders is um recessed so you have them upside down Do have it upside down. Okay. No, I think I had it so right. You... Yeah, because it slides in like okay. a notch. Yep. Let's see if I, can get I, I guess you put it in either way, but uh, the print has a lipped edge in it. Correct. That's right supposed to be up. No. Uh, um, if you look at it from the top, it's like it's got a divot in the top side instead of the bottom side. Yep. Just like that. Okay. Let's see if that goes in easier. Uh, it's not supposed to go in easy. It's supposed to be um, very solid once you get it pushed in so that it doesn't come out on you. Because that's what keeps the screen engaged into the, the print. Um, and you can use a, plier, a pair of pliers or something if you want to uh, pull it all the way in. Um, or if you've just got it so that it doesn't slide out easy, you're usually good. Oh, that was perfect. Okay. And yep. same thing on the other side. Yep. Square side up. That one slid in a little easier. Let me just help this. Yep. Okay. And now your screen is securely mounted in the frame. Uh, so, okay, I did the opposite of last time. I have the my crappy webcam here. I have my nice GH5 here, so I'll be doing a lot of these zoom things. And I have my camera set so that when you focus, it zooms in. So I'll be switching back and forth views like that. All right, so here is the screen from last time, already affixed into the front case. Um, Greg and I went over that last time. I'm going to cut together a highlights video to make it look like this was all professional and that there were no mistakes that I made. Um, and then this is uh, the rear. And the last time, that uh, the very last thing we did on stream, on, yeah, on stream, let me get that in focus, was uh, Greg showed me how to make indentations. So these things are pretty solid and won't pop out. So if you heat up this area right here okay and then take take your screwdriver and just press down to form a kink okay all right now i totally understand once because this is just a groove that that part fits into and if you have a kink there it'll keep it from sliding out tay tay or tate yeah, I think you're supposed to say Tate, but I tape mode, vertically oriented, whatever. I, I I'm, I'm a uh, Nebraska man, and uh, 
we didn't get a lot of those types of translations, I guess. Perfect. Nice. Okay. So that's pretty cool. If you're printing your own, um, you're probably going to have to worry about that. And I yep. have a mister sitting in front of me. So the goal for today is to finish assembly, which should be pretty quick, and then plugging the mister into this thing to check out its custom mode lines. So, Greg, what do you recommend the next step is? And I have the power supply here, which I'm going to be putting above my head where I <laughs> lost everything last time. So if you hear me complain that there is no power supply, it's right there. And uh, my keyboard's coming up here, too, so I can have room to move around. <laughs> All right, so what we'll probably do first is get the wires connected to the boards. Um, so you've got a main control board. Looks like this. Um, so if you look on there, you've got the one little, uh, it's a uh, Molex uh, mini um, Pico <laughs> blade connector. So yeah, um, the cable that they gave us doesn't have the same number of pins as the connector, which is a pain in the rear. Normally when you buy these from somebody or uh, from like AliExpress, they already have that cable plugged in. Okay. Um, so what you want to do is um, you want to plug that cable in so that it starts closest to the uh, FFC connector. So. And notches, uh, wait, let me. Notches go down. Basically, that, right? Yep. All right, let me. I'm so gonna you hold should up have my giant head, so I can make sure I didn't bend a pin or anything. But all right, so that went in. Let me see if I could zoom in, so everybody, if they want to try their own, could see this. Uh, so the pin is right there, up against the inside. Let me see if I can get it even closer. Um, sorry for all the. I don't like autofocus. So I do it manually. I have trust issues. What can I say? All right, there we go. And then on the other side of that cable, you're going to be putting the um, keyboard. And the keyboard's the same way. They have one pin that you don't use. Um, but you do start with the pin one, which is marked with Wait, a little what, what triangle. What do you mean when you say keyboard? It's got buttons on it. Okay, yeah. So that's that's plugged in like this. Okay, so that I must have already plugged that in. So, yeah. Oh, all right, um, yeah. I'll get a close-up shot of that. Um same, for the same exact reasons for people. All right. Make sure it's in the right. Yep, I believe that's right. This is yes. normally where I would like yep. my macro lens, but that's even crazier, so I'm not switching it. <laughs> All right. So you have both of those plugged in. Um, the next thing to plug in is we can set that whole assembly aside for now. Okay. Next thing you're going to want to do is get the little board for the um, LCD. So if you don't have the flat flex plugged in, you plug the big flat flex into the big connector. And then that smaller connector, um, this part is a little tricky. So that goes on the actual LCD. Okay. Um, the way that it goes in is kind of it doesn't make a whole lot of sense um but that connector faces so do i have to remove this one no nope you leave it in your your frame okay. um so what we're going to do is we're going to connect it so the ffcs will face the metal of the um screen let me get my hand out the way so like this yep okay so you can fold out your out. flat flex, and if you look at it, the line for it goes at the top. So like so, yeah. that, the, yep. the white you're all part the way in. Hidden. You can't see that white line anymore. Now you're gonna flip your your uh, latch down and hold it in place. All right. Yep. Okay. And then there should have been some double stick foam. Uh. Yes. 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 Okay. Um. So you can cut it if you want, or you can leave it a solid piece. I just leave it a solid piece. But okay. um, you want to put that onto the little board, kind of like so. As isolation. Yep. And you're just going to stick it to the back of the screen, just so that it doesn't 
stress this. So um, there's nothing to worry about covering. Us. I basically just. Uh, yep, you're I, just using it to to support that connector so that it doesn't wobble around inside, so that the flat flex from the screen doesn't get damaged. Like that, okay? Yep, and then just stick it down to the screen. Like so? Yep. Okay. Perfect. All right. Now you can set the screen aside because you've already got the speakers in place. Yeah, that um, it, that came like that. Um, or I may have done yeah. that on the stream, but they just slide right in. There's no like assembly yep. that just goes in. Yep, okay. they just kind of stick in place. They're, they fit in really nice. Um, all right. So now you're going to want to put your driver controller into the back case. All right, now um, set the screen face down. No, nope. which way? Which way would I go with this? Um, so turn it so that it's 180 degrees from where you have it now. So the wire is facing the uh, into the monitor. Yep. Correct. There's a little cutout for the wire to fit into. Okay. Uh, and this PCB is touching the back of the speaker. Is that okay? Um, it's fine. Or if you don't like it, you can snap that part of the PCB off. It's a two-piece PCB. I normally snap it off. All right. So I have it. I'm going to do the zoom in thing again real quick. So you can see the little holes right next to the front of my pliers. And I'm just going to go right to... That is a clean snap right there. Do I need this? No. That fits in pretty nicely, and I'm assuming I just need to screw those down. Yep. Two screws in there, and that holds everything in place. All right, so that's all like that. Yep. Looking good. Everything looks good there. So now it's going to be plugging all of the screen bits into the controller board. Uh, so One more cable. Yep, you got to plug that into the controller board. Um, you want the blue facing up. It goes into the flat flex that's at the end of the control board. Right. And then uh, the speakers plug into the other um, Pico Blade lx connector on the left side all right here we go so uh yeah let me damn flex cable all right <laughs> all right and then uh you can put everything together at this point um if you want to you can strap down the wires with like a piece of tape or something but uh, think, they're not going to move around too much yeah i think this is one of those scenarios where it's not really necessary Okay, so at this point, all we need is power, which is right yep. up alongside me <laughs> where the boards were that whole time last week. Um, and then you've got two HDMI slots that you can plug into if you have a mini HDMI to HDMI cable, or you can just use the full-size HDMI slot. Uh, so which one's power? That one? Uh, that, um, yes, the one next to the USB port. Okay. That cable's kind of a tight fit. Yep, and that's just standard HDMI we could use, right? Yep. All right, let me get some of the dust off of this. Rub it on my shirt. <laughs> um, and to power it on. Uh, plug it in, and it should start up. And then I think it's the center button? Or no, power is the button to the far right. Yep, there here you we go. go. All right, so, and we still have a picture. That's always good. Let me adjust this for as in focus as I can get. Okay, um, so here we go, lag testing. Let me get that in the very corner up here. One point eight milliseconds. <laughs> that, that is crazy. Is awesome. All right. I'm going to just follow it around five and then down here. So 16 millisecond, milliseconds. 
I mean, so I would say that this has two milliseconds or less of lag. Still a little bright, but that's my camera. That's not the screen. Yeah, it's an IPS display, so it's really crisp. Okay. The blacks aren't the best, but, I mean, that's IPS. Then you have this in the uh, 2048 by... So uh, that's what I'm checking month? now. Um, no, that is in 1080p mode. So okay. I have my second alternate firmware. So this is running in that exact mode that this is designed for. So you know the first thing we got to do, the link test. Here we go. That looks really good. That looks really good. Uh, it won't work with an iPad mini screen just because it's the wrong size for this. Um, yeah, the iPad mini screen is um, is the right aspect ratio. It's the same thing. It's just smaller, and it uses a different uh, interface connector. That's really impressive. I will show this again on camera afterwards, but the last time we did this, you showed me how to set the kickstand. Mm-hmm which I was oddly unable to do for a few tries, but I got it. Um, okay, let me... Oop. Well, I Careful. Do that on camera now, then. So... Uh, light back on. I have to fit it into the slot. And press down. Yep. Um, you're too far angled. The angle is very light. Okay. That it's supposed to be. So it should be... Um, when it's in the the slot, it will be completely flush all the way across its its length. So, um, yep. Oh, okay. I think I got there it. There you go. Man, this is a cool game. Yep. Okay, so uh, the modes for changing that don't actually do anything, Bob. Oh, no, really? Yeah, I don't know why, um, but they don't change anything. Okay. And I don't I, I don't know why. Um, if there's a way to change it in the um, retro tank so that it stretches the image, then it would probably be fine because it would stretch it back to 4x3 when you scale. Generic 16x9. I mean, this was really designed for the Mister, so now we're just trying to get it to do stuff just because I feel like experimenting. But <laughs> so this looks pretty cool. Let me um, let me just try turning scan lines off. PlayStation. <laughs> it's all right, Ryan. Uh, Nine sixty P, just like I thought. Perfect. Okay. Because it's just feeding the resolution exactly as is. Now let's look at scan lines on this. Uh it looks like the focus is coming out with that moray pattern that I keep complaining about. So let me try to try to do it that way. Nope. See that weird swirly pattern? That's like the bane of my existence whenever I take shots of displays. Drives me crazy. It's gotta be how the camera works yeah yeah when you get zoomed in close like that you don't see that pattern in there and then you back out and that's all i see damn it all right well we're just gonna have to deal with this for a minute then let me turn scan lines off this is very cool is there a game uh with a need track mode i could lo load up Actually, you know what? I have a. Well, this is cool, and I'll leave the PlayStation out because we can come back to it, but there's one other thing I want to test. Hold on one sec. I have my original Woozle prototype Game Boy Advance consoleizer. I made him sign it. He didn't want to, and I was like, uh uh, this is an original Woozle. We are keeping it. The aspect ratio, I mean, that's something where you could probably mess with that. Like, hopefully. Um, if Woozle does a second consoleizer or something, he could have the aspect ratios uh, controls built in or something. It is too bad that the built-in driver board doesn't have that. Yeah, I I don't understand why because the options are there, but it doesn't 
actually do anything. It's got to be something with the firmware that they include with these. Um, I tried to get the firmware tools from uh, Realtek for it, but they didn't respond to me. So They won't. You'll need to find somebody that works with them um, in another capacity. So somebody that, like, their company just bought 10,000 of, of something from them, and they're like, oh, by the yep. way, can you help me with this other project? Does anybody remember the key, uh, the key connection or key combination for? Did the sticker get put on the bottom of it? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah. All right. Uh, left or Z plus right plus C right plus D right. There we go. Okay. So it's already on stretch mode, so that's why it's filling out pretty good. Oh yeah. All right. Oh, of course, wrong button. My setup. Seven twenty p. All right, and let's. Direct mode, yes. Looks like it's not working. Oof. It'll just time Seven. out. Done like that. It's okay. It'll just time out. I don't think this is a very high latency mode anyway. All right, cool. You can try 50 hertz instead of the 60 hertz for. I think the screen will take it. No, no, it won't. It does not like that. Nope. Let me see if I could do a zoom in. Look at Mario blinking. Uh, okay, so that's no scan lines. That's hybrid. That does look better. Come on, Mario. Don't stop blinking. There we go. Yeah, it actually did. All right, I'm impressed. This looks pretty good. Yeah. I'm impressed. Color bars look good. Yeah. Right here is because of the camera. Between uh, C and E, you can very clearly see a difference in person. Um, that's really just got to be the camera settings. Um, that matches just about the same. Check. Yeah, there's no way that's going to come out okay. It looks fine on screen, but there's no way that would come come out alright on camera, especially with any kind of streaming compression. That's something you'll never see on a CRT. <laughs> Look at how uh, how good that lines up. Jeez. If Steve from Retrotech was in the in the chat right now, he'd be having a heart attack that we just. We basically just bolted some stuff together and everything looks perfect and he's going to spend hours and hours rebuilding CRTs to do that. All right. Neo Geo. Not to get to the volume again. Menu. You went past it. There. One more time. There you go. That's my only complaint, is if it would be really great if we were just able to have normal volume buttons. I know. If we can get the code for that, we might possibly be able to have that reprogrammed. Yeah. I'm surprised that just using the volume, uh, which is the farthest left, or the channel plus and minus is what it's labeled on here. If you just hit those, what do they say? That brings up just the status menu. Okay. Yeah, it's got to be a, a, 
a firmware thing, a setting they did in the firmware on these things. That's input. And that's power. Could always solder wires to the uh, audio amplifier that's on here because it's uh, got a digital uh, volume up and down and just manually do it yourself. Yeah, that'd work. <laughs> uh, this is Alpha Mission 2 for anybody that was wondering. So, um, all right, well, this was... Uh, an absolutely awesome stream. Uh, thank you, Greg, for joining me again. I'm glad I didn't royally yeah. screw this one up. Thank you to, to everybody for for jumping in and um, and supporting me over on Twitch. Really appreciate that. I think I'm going to be doing a lot of these on Twitch just because I really enjoy doing them and I don't have to be terrified it's going to kill my YouTube algorithm. So you could uh, you're probably going to catch me a lot on these. But uh, thank you very much, and uh, I guess I'll see everybody soon.